this orchid on a mount, oh my goodness, that would be deluxe. She is currently in gorgeous, mega active growth with new growths everywhere. And you can see my problem here. I have to address this. Needless to say, she has done so well. You can see I'm so discombobulated about this project. I'm squeezing the mask. Doi. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Right. Deep breath, if you can. And let's go. This is delicado, to say the least. Stop the dithering. Goodness me, Nina. Get on with it. Whew. Ta da! Aren't they adorable? <laughs> Welcome to the video. I am so happy that I can report a sort of progress report on my Lelia Lundii. Seeing as I was uber apprehensive in doing what I did back then, getting her into a bigger pot with Lekka again, with Semi Hydro, even though she has to live indoors and all those factors, and how will she cope throughout my winter, and well, all these contemplations, I shall link that repot video in the description if you would like to see how I fandangled my way around this somewhat delicate repot and the uncertainty that came with it at the time. But it is so nice to be able to do this reveal to show you how she is coping and she's blooming for us. <laughs> Phew! <laughs> Doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet because there are certain factors happening in the pot that in my opinion normally I would not. I would not let her bloom out. Seeing as she's also got so many more buds to come, she's also actively growing other new growths. It's tentative on the new roots front. <laughs> and yes, well, one big factor that always happens during the winter in my conditions is I do get salt accumulating at the surface of the media because this orchid, after all, goes into my winters while in active growth and I cannot not fertilize her. But because the conditions aren't ideal 100%, she doesn't absorb as much as I put in. So I need to dial that down a little bit. Now I am dialing it down, but moving into the winter, it's always a little bit of a guessing game. How much is it going to take? How much isn't it? But I did put a lot of calcium and magnesium into her. Then it doesn't get absorbed as fast after a repot and all these factors. Well, I've been picking off the salty lecker off the surface because if she does grow other roots more vigorously eventually, then I don't want them to be affected. But let us just celebrate the fact that Lelia Lundii is in bloom right on time, despite the stressors of a repot. And she is mealybug free, which is very important for this time of year for this orchid because her fragrance is a delicious, delicious sweet sugar vanilla incredible these two blooms where she lives indoors throughout the entire winter i do not move her <laughs> these two blooms are heady and heavy this time around and well <laughs> cartwheels around the patio <laughs> It may be a little bit too soon for me to give this update. However, because I've been mentioning my conditions, they are a little bit challenging. I prefer to show you while she's doing well so that if there is a decline, I can also give feedback to you as to why she declined, which I hope she won't. But we are not out of the woods yet. We still have another, I always say, nine weeks to go because some orchids can take low temperatures and dull days better than others. Rapiculus lalias, not so much. This time of year, especially this one, she would like to have a lot of bright sun. And of course, she wants to have a lot of airflow, but she wants her days to be warmer than what I can provide. So what I've been doing is having her on the lower shelf of my glass shelf on sunny days. That is where the sun comes in full force. And then at least that area heats up. Whereas at night, 
even though I stuff a towel into the gap of the sliding door. She gets quite the cool down at night. I'm gonna put the temperatures up on the screen because they do vary a lot, which is fine. She can handle the low temperatures as long as she gets the warmth during the days. She's not the same as my other Rapiculus Lelias that can be outside and on a dull day, the temperatures don't rise much. But with the glass and everything, with the direct sun, I'm kind of trying to simulate to a degree what she would have out in her natural habitat. It's working so far and that's why I'm doing this video now so that hopefully there is no decline and we don't have to think about it again but in case there is a decline I can actually go into more details why there is a decline and also because maybe you want to grow Lelia Lundii but you don't want to have her mounted and are questioning whether she would do well in semi-hydroponics with Lekka. Well, here is your answer and under conditions that are not controllable. So if you have conditions where your days can be nice and warm and your nights nice and cool this time of year, which is the winter months, no matter where you are in the hemisphere, it's working. No evaporative cooling side effects either. So think about it. I would prefer to grow this orchid mounted. However, I'm sure you can understand why <laughs> it's not happening because the mount would have to be huge. She has a creeping rhizome. I wanted her in this big bowl for at least two years. We're heading into the first year and some of the growths are up against the edge of the pot. Yeah, I'm not going to repot her again in 2024, that's for sure, but I'm going to come up against the same challenges as I did with the smaller pot eventually. But it's a great problem to have because if you've got an orchid that is doing that well and growing that vigorously, that means she's happy and that makes me happy. So we have plenty more buds to come and I'm letting her bloom out because all this time I have been watching, observing how the older pseudobulbs respond to the repot. Are they shriveling because I disturbed the roots? Are the roots suffering in the pot because of the evaporative cooling, etc. and etc. And they're not shriveling. They're nice and plump. So far I've only lost one leaf. I may lose this leaf as well, but this is the old part right here of the orchid and then she has branched out and gone into all sorts of wonderful directions with new growths. So they never actually declined and that is why I'm letting her bloom out, which usually each bloom lasts about two weeks. But as you can see, more buds are coming. We're gonna have her around at least for another six weeks, if not more. And drum roll, it is the first time ever that this orchid has shown me it is possible to get two blooms on a single spike. That is a first. Now, of course, the greedy orchid grower in me thinks, <laughs> you're right, winter of 24 and 25, I would like to see more growth with two blooms per spike. But anyway, let us just be happy for the time being that my Lelia Lundia is doing well. And if you have any questions about this orchid, well, I encourage you to check out the link I've put into the description where I've repotted her. I've talked about her a little bit more, but there are plenty of Rapiculus Lelia videos in my playlist called Lelia Lookbook if you are into these cute little miniatures. We will be seeing this orchid again for sure with more of the buds bloomed out if, if having moved her outside no does not induce bud blast because there is that risk but it was worth the risk because I wanted to show you how she is performing to date. I would so appreciate if you would give my Lelia Lundii a like for doing so well. How about sharing the video as well? And if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Let me know in the comments how I can get your vote of confidence for you to subscribe to the channel. Thank you in the meantime so, so much for watching. The support is greatly appreciated. I wish you a fabulous day on the condition though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Meanwhile, she is back in her location and I am going to continue picking out the salty lecker. <laughs> Bye.